Greetings, everybody. Get your King James Bible and turn to Matthew chapter 27. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. We are doing uh, the continuation of the Dreams and Visions series. We're almost done. Matthew chapter 27, verse 1. We're going to read the whole chapter, I suppose. Little background. Jesus was uh, taken by the temple guard and was given the trial by night by Ananias and Caiaphas, the high priests. And uh, they, are, they want him sentenced to death. They've sentenced him to death. However, Roman law does not allow them to kill anybody. So they got to take him to Pilate and have Pilate do their dirty work. Uh, you've always been told, oh, the Romans killed Jesus, but uh, the King James Bible tells a different story. Verse 1. When the morning was come, all the chief priests, now these are not Catholic priests, by the way. I've heard people try to tell you that these are Catholic priests. They're not. The Vatican did not even exist at this time period. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, which had betrayed him when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, What is that to us? See thou to that. You know, even Judas was somewhat sorry that, you know, he was sorry what he did. And the chief are, and, the, and the priests are like, big deal. What is that to us? What, what do I, you know, we don't care. You know, so what? You betrayed innocent blood. So what? What is that to us? Verse 5. And he, Judas... And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed, and went and hanged himself. And the chief priest took the silver pieces. Now, he cast them down in the temple. Who's hanging out in the temple? Not the, not, not the Romans. And the chief priest took the silver pieces and said, It is not lawful for to put them into the treasury, because it is the price of blood. See, here it is, they're condemning an innocent man to death. But they're worried about taking blood money and putting it back into the temple treasury. See, they had no problem with murder, but, you know, they're worried about, you know, oh, we can't put blood money in the, the temple treasury. That's, that would be, you know, God would be upset with us. Yeah. That's the kind of foolishness that you're going to learn from the Noahides and the Yeshua crowd. And the Hebrew Roots people. That's the kind of nonsense. And the chief priest took the silver pieces and said, It is not lawful for to put them into the treasury, because it is the price of blood. But we can murder somebody. That's okay. Verse 7. And they took counsel and bought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. Oh yeah, let's do something good with this blood money. We're going to bury strangers in it. Therefore, that field was called the field of blood unto this day. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy, or Jeremiah, Jeremy the prophet, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him that was valued, whom they of the children of Israel did value. The children of Israel, not the Romans, 
30 pieces of silver. That was basically the price of a slave. That's, that's how valuable they considered the life of Jesus. My mistake, Zechariah. Chapter 11, verse 12. And I said unto them, If ye think good, give me my price, and if not, forbear. So they weighed for my price thirty pieces of silver. And the Lord said unto me, Cast it unto the potter, a goodly price that I was priced of, uh, at of them. And I took the thirty pieces of silver and cast them to the potter in the house of the Lord. So, there you go. And that's uh, Matthew 27, verse 9. All right. And then we'll fulfill that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, And they took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of him that was valued, whom they of the children of Israel did value, and they gave them for the potter's field as the Lord appointed me. And Jesus stood before the governor. And the governor asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus said unto him, Thou sayest. In other words, if you say so. And when he was accused of the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. And then said Pilate unto him, Hearest thou not how many things they witness against thee? And he answered him to never a word, insomuch that the governor marveled greatly. Now, at that feast, the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. Uh, do you remember the story about the tabernacle series? About the, uh, they took the two goats and they let the scapegoat go. They laid upon it the he sins of all the people and they let it go into the wilderness the wilderness of sin and then the other goat they sacrificed remember that story well if you want to read it I'll find it for you that's in uh, Leviticus 16 and verse 8 and Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats one lot for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat you ever wonder where that word, he's, he was a scapegoat for uh, the boss that made a mistake? Yeah. It's amazing. Uh, writing on the wall, uh, a hole in the wall. You know, you'd be surprised how many English sayings come from the Bible. Because we used to be a lot more godly people than we are now. We used to be a lot closer to the Lord. Verse 9, And Aaron shall bring the goat upon which the Lord's lot fell, and offer him for a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to make an atonement with him and to let him go, and to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. They would lay their hands upon his head, lay the sins of the people upon the head of the goat, and let it go. And uh, isn't it funny that the Goat is the symbol for the church of Satan. Or is it? Just a coincidence, I'm sure. Yeah. Matthew 27, verse 15. Now at that feast, the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. Ah, the scapegoat. And they had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. Who knew? Pilate knew. Pilate knew darn well it was for envy that the uh, you-know-whos, not the Romans, had delivered Jesus to him to be killed. Now, you know, when P Jesus had crowds of thousands of people following him you better believe that Pilate had spies following Jesus to report on his words and what he was doing and you wouldn't send just one you and you wouldn't 
let the spies know each other who they were. You would send people that don't know each other so that, you know, if you get five people and they basically tell you all the same thing, well, you know they're telling you the truth. But you better believe Pilate had spies checking Jesus out because he didn't want any problems with rebellion in his kingdom. Because if he had a problem that he couldn't handle, the emperor at Rome would probably get rid of him and replace him. And uh, you don't want that to happen. So, you know, you've got to keep an eye on your what's going on when you're a governor. So, for he knew that for envy they had delivered him. Now, here's the punchline, uh, verse 19. When he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, His wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that just man? Don't have anything to do with Jesus. Have thou nothing to do with that just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. I would have loved to sit down with Pilate's wife and ask her, what was the dream that you've had? I would have loved to have heard that story. For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. Don't have anything to do with this guy. The governor answered and said unto them, I'm sorry, verse 20, but the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. All right, verse 21. The governor, Pilate, answered and said unto them, Whither of the twain will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate saith unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all say unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why? What evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but rather a tumult was made. What's a tumult? Like a riot. He took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. See, Pilate wanted nothing to do with this. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on our children. Now, who do you think it's talking to there? You think that's the Romans speaking? No. No, it wasn't the Romans. Verse 26. Then released he Barabbas unto them, and when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers, and they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. And after that they had mocked him, they took the robe off from him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. Him they compelled to bear his cross. And when they were come unto a place called Golgotha, that is to say, a place of a skull, they gave him vinegar to drink mingled with gall, and when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him, and parted his garments, casting lot, that it might be fulfilled, which is spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. And sitting down, they watched him there, and set up over his head his accusation written, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and another on the left. 
And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads, and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself if thou be the Son of God. Come down from the cross. I can just hear him mocking. Likewise also the chief priests, mocking him with the scribes and elders, said, He saved others. Himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. No, you wouldn't, you liars. You didn't believe him when he raised the dead. You didn't believe him when he gave sight to the blind. You didn't believe him when he restored the wither hands, when he made the lame to walk. You didn't believe him then, and you won't believe him now, you liars. If he be the king of Israel, let him come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The thieves also which were crucified with him cast the same in their, his teeth. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is to say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? So Jesus is speaking in either Hebrew or Aramaic, depending upon who you talk to. Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is to say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Now, if the New Testament, uh, Matthew, was written in Hebrew, why would it tell you, that is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? I mean, if it was in Hebrew, it would need to say that. Everybody would know, right? No, it's because it was written in Greek. And they told, he was speaking in Hebrew, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them that stood there, when they heard that, said, this man calleth for Elias. What? That's not what he said, you idiots. And everybody wants you to think that Hebrew was a common language back then. Those were probably Jews standing there, and they're, they're, they don't even know what he's saying. He said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? But they said, This man calleth for Elias. Uh, no, no, no. Verse 48, And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, Let be, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake and the rocks rent. Now, I covered that more in detail in the Tabernacle series. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept, they were dead, arose, and came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many. What kind of story were these dead people that were risen from the grave, what kind of stories were they telling? I suspect that they were in Abraham's bosom. And if you don't know that story, uh, I've got a Bible study on it. The rich man and Lazarus, Abraham's bosom. All the Old Testament saints were in Abraham's bosom. Everybody else was in hell, in the flames. Christ went for three days and three nights into the heart of the earth and preached unto the spirits in prison. Believe on me, and thou shalt be saved, was probably paraphrasing what he told them. I am the Messiah, the Christ. What kind of stories did these people say? You know, they spent three days. Christ wasn't resurrected for three days and three nights. He was in the heart of the earth, teaching and preaching to these people, the Old Testament saints. So these people that rose up from the grave that went into Jerusalem, what kind of stories were they telling? And I bet you the you-know-who's had them put to death. 
because they don't want anything to upset their little theological apple cart. I mean, how dare Jesus go into the temple and overthrow the, the money changers' tables and those that bought and sold doves when Christ said, My house shall be a house of prayer, and you've made it a den of thieves. Who is he talking to there? The Romans? I don't think so. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Now when the centurion, a Roman soldier, and they that were with him watching Jesus saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. Here it is, an unsaved Roman centurion soldier had more sense than the elders of Israel. And many people were there beholding afar off, which followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering unto him, among which was Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's children. When the even was come, there was there came a rich man of Arimathea named Joseph, who also himself was Jesus' disciple. He went to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. Then Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hone, hewn out in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulcher and departed. And there was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary sitting over against the sepulcher. Now the next day, that following the day of the preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate, saying, Sir, remember that that deceiver. See, this is what they, they still call him to this, to that, to this. They still call him that to this day. That deceiver. Saying, Sir, we remember that that deceiver said, while he was yet alive, after three days I will rise again. Command therefore that the sepulcher be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people, He is risen from the dead. So the last error shall be worse than the first. Pilate said unto them, Ye have a watch, Go your way and make it as sure as you can. So they went and made the sepulcher sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. And guess what? Uh, it's recorded that they paid the soldiers. Now, whether these were Roman soldiers or temple soldiers, I'm not sure. I believe they were probably temple soldiers. But uh, they... Uh, when Jesus was risen from the dead, they paid the soldiers off and promised them uh, to help them spare their lives by saying that, well, you know, we were asleep and uh, the disciples came by night when we were sleeping and stole the body away. Well, if you were sleeping, how would you know this? And another thing, sleeping on watch, a soldier sleeping on watch was a, a crime punishable by death. Uh, you didn't want to do that, especially in wartime. If, if even the U.S. Army in World War II, if, if you were falling asleep on watch, guard duty, in wartime, you would be executed. That was a pretty good incentive to, to stay awake. I mean, falling asleep on guard duty was a big no-no in any army. And, you know, how would you know the disciples came and stole the body if you were asleep. How would you know? They didn't have movie cameras back then. But the, the you-know-whos paid them off, promised to spare their lives, and paid them money to, to do that. And that's commonly reported among the you-know-whos to this day. So, yeah. So, uh, and then all the disciples... Well, 10 of the 12 disciples died for their faith. Now, if you were a disciple and you wanted to trick everybody and you stole the body of Christ away to make yourself some great guy, uh, you know, and then the you-know-whos 
catch you and say, deny Christ or we're going to kill you. I mean, what would be the purpose of dying for your faith? I mean, you, you know you stole the body. Wouldn't you produce the body to save your life and say, well, I was lying, you know, spare my life. I'll show you where the body is. Or, or yeah, we, we stole the body, you know. I mean, that's the kind of nonsense that the you-know-whos teach. I mean, you know, nobody's going to die for their faith when they know it's a lie. They didn't steal the body away or they would have produced it or, or admitted they stole the body to save their lives. Ten of the twelve apostles died for their faith. Judas Iscariot hung himself. The only apostle that didn't die for his faith with faith was John on the Isle of Patmos that wrote the book of Revelation. He was the only one that didn't die for his faith. Paul died for his faith. Stephen died for his faith. And they want you, the you-know-whos want you to think that the disciples came and stole his body away, and then they all were a bunch of idiots and died for their faith for no stinking reason. That's the kind of nonsense that you'll get listening to these unbelieving rabbi, rabid eyes. Yeah, I don't think so. Whatever they teach you, I would believe the opposite. Yeah. If they tell you it's raining outside, take a look out. And if you see the sun and the clear blue sky, you'll know. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever they teach, be very skeptical. But, I mean, even, even Satan doesn't lie all the time. You know? He doesn't lie all the time. So... <laughs> you know, because if you, somebody's telling a lie all the time, eventually you're going to figure out, well, they always lie, so I'm not going to listen to them. So, what can I tell you? All right, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen. <laughs>